that this government never sanctioned a policy where private individuals and businessmen could pay for the birthdays and weddings of policemen or or other public officials. In fact, we think it's reprehensible. It's reprehensible. So that's all I'm going to say for today, for now, because these are legal matters and they're before the court. Since yesterday, I've had the source who confirmed, but it wasn't made public then, that Brutus uh, was prevented from leaving Guyana along with his wife. And uh, he is said to have had a meeting with, allegedly, with the permanent secretary. Well, it's no longer allegedly because he's now suing the permanent secretary uh, who blocked him from leaving the country. In the investigations, the impartial investigation done by an arm of the police force, there is a recommendation to lay, that went to the DPP to lay multiple charges against the individual for breaches of the law. What does this tell you that maybe Brutus's intention, throwing all of these uh, court matters against them? Well, as I've been saying repeatedly, um, it's an indication of the crisis at the senior level of the Guyana Police Force. These and other recent revelations just confirming what I was saying all, all the time. The Guyana police force is in crisis. And it is clear that the government does not want to address the issue in the manner it should be addressed. And this I see the particular individual now filing a constitutional motion claiming that somehow the executive, the same executive, the, the PVP or the executive, is influencing the course of the negotiate the, the investigation. Welcome back to the flight. Hit that subscription button, buddy, and stay updated with everything that's trending in Guyana and the diaspora. Thanks. Um. So let me make it clear that there is no attempt to discriminate against anyone. I've seen recently a, a slew of social media people who are linked to the opposition particularly the extreme ones, attempting to portray this issue as one, a race issue. But that's predictable. Let me make it clear what our policies are. We support the police force. We support the leadership of the police force. We support them to do their work but they must comply with the laws of this country. The PPP will not tolerate corruption in the police force or anywhere else. And when we find corruption in the police force or anywhere else, there will be no attempt to cover it up. So if you believe that you have a special relationship with the government and that we will pursuant to that relationship cover up your misdeeds you have it wrong you don't know the pvp when this matter surfaced the same the opposition was saying that these individuals or this particular individual was linked to the government of Guyana. And they did not trust that there will be an impartial investigation. The AFC and the PNC called for external body to investigate. 
because they believe that there will be a cover-up. We made it clear at that time that the investigations would be professional and there will be no interference from the executive to steer the investigation either way and that the chips may fall where they may. I said those words. In the investigations, the impartial investigation done by an arm of the police force, there is a recommendation to lay, that went to the DPP to lay multiple charges against the individual for breaches of the law. I see the particular individual now filing a constitutional motion claiming that somehow the executive, the same executive, the, the PVP or the executive is influencing the course of the negotiate, the, the investigation. APNU was saying something different. They were saying, we will help this individual. We'll cover up what, what he was doing. He is now saying, we are influencing it, it to lay charges against him. There, we have no interest whatsoever in that. But if you did illegal things, you will face the consequences. And from all that I've read, that a lot of wrong things took place, a lot of illegalities took place. And so we will respond to the constitutional motion in court. And since some charges were made, trust me, the, our affidavit to respond to the, those charges may not be beneficial to the particular individual because we will go into great details about what our findings were. In the procurement system, and so when he was heading the administration of the police force. So further, I don't want to say anything on the matter. And let me also make it clear here today that this government never sanctioned a policy where private individuals and businessmen could pay for the birthdays and weddings of policemen or, or other public officials. In fact, we think it's reprehensible. It's reprehensible. So that's all I'm going to say for today, for now, because these are legal matters and they're before the court. One love, Delta 9 family. Welcome back to the flight and thanks again for flying Delta. Things are getting hectic on the ground. Things are heating up in this Brutus versus now the government case. Because now we're hearing allegedly that Brutus is dragging the EG and a number of other members before the courts. Right? Because they're barring him from leaving the country. Seemingly, right now, because of all of the charges and the way that everything has been publicized, persons are looking to cut ties with the sinking ship. And they're also allegedly kicking him under the bus and leaving him in the hot water, as we would call it in Guyana. Because now we can hear directly from the top cop himself and he is going to give us some insights and some intricate details as to what is going on with this case because we're hearing that a number of persons are now involved and entangled in this court case and you just hear with the vp had to say right there he said look i ain't getting nothing more for say this is in court and guess what make sure 
that you hit that subscription button because we are going to be updating every time there's a progress with what's going on with this and right now it's hot like fire you will hear right now from none other than top cop slow call the police what does this tell you that may be brutus's intention throwing all of these uh court matters against them well as i've been saying repeatedly um it's an indication of the crisis at the senior level of the guided police force this and other recent revelations just confirming what I was saying all, all the time. The Guyana police force is in crisis. And it is clear that the government does not want to address the issue in the manner it should be addressed. And these things, these things are so demoralizing, I'm sure, to the junior ranks. More than demoralizing, even in stepping away from the Brutus matter now, we're hearing that it is alleged, mind you, that a junior rank is involved in a uh, abduction case. Well, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that or heard about that. Yeah, it's it's horrible. Absolutely. Mr. Caesar, you have a question for uh, our former senior cop. Mr. Paul Slow. Yes, Mr. Slow, I would like to ask you, you know, based on what is going on um, with Mr. Brutus at this point, you know, and your level of expertise within the Diana Police Force, you know, what do you think that he is thinking? at this point you know yeah yeah what's the what is, what is he trying to achieve Pardon me? yeah what what, what is what, he trying to say, what exactly what exactly is brutus thinking at this time well i can't say what brutus is thinking but um based on the application um i'm hearing that he is trying to get injunction to prevent certain actions and he's trying to get certain orders from the court that is what i am hearing but as i've said the thing is new fresh and you have want us to read and, di and digest what is really happening but it's a worrying development worrying development indeed uh, uh quickly just maybe just a couple of minutes and my apologies for just uh invading your privacy at this time uh but what was the they, they were fighting you to ensure that you promote uh brutus or something like that the very regime that he's suing now Yes, I, 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 you know, that is the, that I would say that that is the one in the beginning of my um, strife with the government in that the I was the chairman of the Police Service Commission back in 2020 when the government came into power. And in September of the same year, 2020, I had a meeting with the president and um, he indicated that he wanted certain officers, including Brutus promoted. And I advised him that I was not the person who promoted, it was a police service commission, and there were rules governing promotion, which included that persons with pending dismay matters um, cannot be promoted until those matters have been completed. And at the time, Brutus had a pending dismay matter, and um, therefore, uh, it could not have been considered. And later that same year in December, as a matter of fact, to be precise, on December the 23rd, 2020, the Police Service Commission met and made a short list of ranks to be further considered for promoted for promotion from the rank of inspector to assistant commissioner. And um, the short list was leaked to the president. On the very night of December the 23rd, I had another discussion on the, tele on the telephone with the president and he asked about the promotion for Brutus and other um, officers and I advise him that because of the pending display matter they could not have been considered at that time and he flew into a rage and wanted to know why and his people not being promoted and all of that and that left a whole host of um court challenges Brutus took the police office commission to court um to have an injunction to prevent the promotions uh, from being made that matter was ordered and finally determined on the on june 28th 2021 when the chief justice acting chief justice issued the decision and she said in the ruling that she found senior superintendent Brutus as he was to be self-serving she said that and what happened he was kept in the position of administration he was promoted to assistant commissioner and as as the old people would say when you put cap for watch milk what do you expect and old people are oftentimes right
Uh, there's yes. one thing, and uh, this was uh, since yesterday, I've had the source who confirmed, but it wasn't made public then, that Brutus uh, was prevented from leaving Guyana along with his wife. And uh, he is said to have had a meeting with, allegedly, with the permanent secretary. Well, it's no longer allegedly because he's now suing the permanent secretary uh, who blocked him from leaving the country as a senior officer, former senior officer now, do you find that to be strange? What, the, him being prevented from leaving the Pre country? Preventing and then going to the permanent secretary and the permanent secretary telling him no. Well, I don't know if the permanent secretary has any authority to prevent a person from leaving the country. I know in recent time, the courts have made that very, very clear that um, even when a person is charged with a felony, the court has ruled that the police cannot prevent you from leaving unless there's an order from the court. So if the police charge someone with a felony and they want that person to remain in Guyana, they have to go to the court with an application to get the order from the court to prevent the person from leaving. So this thing about blacklisting persons and all of that, it is illegal. So but the as court... a senior officer, does he have to seek permission before he goes on overseas vacation? Well, the police are this thing, and I will, um, where when you want to travel overseas, you apply for leave to be spent overseas. You would state that your leave is to be spent overseas. There's a whole sort of thing in the uh, in the force. But I'm saying that based on the ruling of the court and all of that, that may very well be unlawful and unconstitutional. Yeah, but yes, yeah. there is, there, the, in the police regulation, when you want to spend your leave abroad, you have to make an application for you in, in your application. You have to state where the leave is to be spent. And so that is exactly what Brutus may have done, and it was denied. Yes. Good. So that's what he's suing about now. I. Well, the, law, the lawfulness of that will be determined by the court, but I'm saying that after regards to the ruling that if a person is charged with a felony, the police, immigration, because, you know, in Guyana, the police are in, responsible for immigration. Yeah. Uh, and therefore, um, if the court is saying that a person who is charged with a felony cannot be prevented from leaving unless the court so orders, then I would think that the one who wants to go and leave, um, not charged, a regular police rank wants to go and leave overseas, it might be unlawful to prevent that person from traveling overseas. I don't know, but the court will have to determine that. Thank you so much, Mr. Paul Slow. Uh, we have seen the haste in which the DPP's chambers have uh, um, made decisions to charge people with very small, minor stuff, frivolous stuff at that too. Uh, you uh, having personal experiences with that as well. Uh, dozens of charges, we are told, were recommended. Uh, yet the DPP found that there was insufficient evidence on maybe all of those recommendations. Uh, any surprise there? Well, what I understand from what is carried in the media, I mean, this morning, um, Starbuck News carried an article saying that there was no... The, no evidence found in one particular investigation. But they are saying, Soku has since said, that another investigation, another more expansive investigation was done, and they have sent a file with recommendations for dozens of charges. That is what they say, dozens of charges. That file, according to the release, was sent on the 1st of this month, over two weeks now, and um, based on what it was said, that they are still awaiting directions from the director of public prosecution in respect to that second in expansive investigation and that is quoting what they say an expansive investigation was done absolutely and those uh files were sent on the first of october still waiting still languishing on the desk of the director of public prosecution and maybe that's the reason why he was prevented on going on overseas leave uh, because maybe they suspect if he goes out of the country, there's a possibility he may not return. I don't know how true that is, but he should be allowed to leave. He should be allowed to come to the United States of America. Uh, that's another issue uh, when he goes to the airport. Uh, maybe he'll find out whether he can leave or not, too. So that may be another issue. But I do hope he gets to leave. And when he does, let him come and let's have a cup of coffee. We will come over to Connecticut, wherever you are. Uh, Mr. Paul Slow, for all of us to have that cup of coffee. Maybe you'll be reunited with Brutus. <laughs> I like I like that mischievous kind of laugh. Uh, Mr. Caesar, do you have... <laughs> we all laugh. I bet when you're conducting your classroom, you don't laugh. Eight butterfly, sea moss powder. 
Take your daily routine to the next level. Natural vegan superfood powder, essential multivitamin powder made just for you. It is said it costs one and a half million dollars for a license and one and a half million dollars per weapon. I, I can't believe this is happening. A PPP. PPP, just before they demitted the office, promoted him to assistant commissioner because it is alleged that you should go to a certain place in Church Street and meet with a certain man and divulge all sorts of information with him. And he was promised that he was going to be made commissioner of police. That is the allegation. The Venezuela crisis is just that. It has moved from a border controversy, a border dispute, to a crisis of a multidimensional facet of issue. 